there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part two of Scroll Saw for Beginners. Well on last week's show we left off right about here and um, there isn't really much to say. This is a continuation from last week. I just for me to put it all into one show last week, it would have been over an hour long production. And uh, I didn't want to drag it on that long. So guys, without any more talking uh, from me in this introduction anyway, let's uh, get moving forward and carry on uh, exactly where we left off. So I'd like to go through these practice patterns with you. And um, in order to do that, we're going to start with number one, which is the straight line. And you may think that that would be the easiest one to do. But as I said earlier, you have blade drift, which is going to be working against you the whole time. So you, you're going to have to continually steer this to keep the line straight. Um, this particular scroll saw is a top feeding scroll saw. So... Um, I'm able to lift the arm to lower the blade down through. You'll have to check your manual for what yours is. But I just want to show you with this blade entry hole already drilled how quick it is to put the blade down through. So we'll loosen the tension, loosen the blade in the retainer at the bottom. We'll line up our piece. You put the blade through the hole, let it come down into the bottom retainer, tighten it, tension it. That's it. You're done. And now I've had years of experience doing it, but if you train yourself from the beginning, like I said, to uh, not look underneath the table, your blade changes will be just as quick. So we're gonna start off cutting this straight line and saws at 50% power. I have a number three reverse tooth blade there. I've checked the tension. Nice tone on the blade. I have the dust blower set to blow at the base of the blade here so that the dust is staying away from my line, almost a little in front of it so that we can see. And we're gonna start cutting. Now, remember, as I said, there's blade drift. So you may have to turn your piece almost sideways sometimes to get that blade to cut that straight line. You'll notice that I'm not going fast, I'm not going crazy. I am taking my time and doing a good job with it. Just doing it as best I can. And if you're in a hurry and you're in a big rush to finish projects, then maybe scrolling isn't for you. Scrolling is something where it takes what it takes. It just, it's a slow, nice, easy process. And you can see there how nice and straight we're staying on the line. And it's just from compensating for that blade drift. Slight steering motions with light pressure forward. We're not jamming it in, we're not forcing it in, and we're sure as heck not steering like crazy. But you may also note here that I'm not pushing straight into that blade. Look at how crooked my piece is as it's going in, and that's to cut a straight line. And the reason for that is I'm compensating for the drift. You can minimize drift or ease it a bit if you use a sharpening stone and round off the back of your blade here. That will ease up on the drift a little, but not a lot. And now that I've said that, why don't I show you how to do that now that we've got this nice straight line cut and you guys can uh, do that, I'm sure. So now that we've got that straight line cut and we wanna talk about compensating for the drift and trying to eliminate it a little or lessen it, what I've got here is a little sharpening stone and it's nothing special, it's just a simple little stone. And what I do is put it at the back of your blade with your blade tensioned and with the saw running, Run that blade, that sharpening stone around the back end of your blade while it's running, just like this. You don't need to do it too much. 
that's it, we're done. And what that does is it rounds the back of this blade. Part of the reason for drift being caused is the sharp edges on the back of this blade like to dig into that wood and twist the blade ever so slightly to try to get it to go off of the line that you're trying to cut. So if you round off the back of your blade before cutting, um, you'll find that it goes a long way to easing up on some of that drift. Well, now that I've shown you that, why don't we try to cut this number two pattern? And the number two pattern is a series of easy and tight curves all the way around to the end, remembering that if you want the uh, more gentle curve, like these ones here, then your feed rate is faster than your curve rate. For this circle kind of even curve here, your feed rate and your uh, rotation rate are the same. And for a tight curve like this, you got it. Your feed rate is slow and your rotating rate is a little faster. So let's go through cutting this and I'll try to narrate it as I go. Dust blower directly and just slightly in front of the blade to take away to clear your pattern. And we're going to start cutting with a straight line that comes right into our test. And again, we're compensating here for that drift. And now into the gentle sweeping curve. And again here, your feed rate faster than your rotation rate. Coming around this corner to a more even curve, your feed rate and your rotation rate are equal. Just like this. And then now coming up here, you got to straight away. So again, you're going to compensate for that blade drift. And when you get to here, your feed rate will slow down and your rotation rate will speed up to get that tighter curve. This one here is kind of circular. So again, feed rate and rotation rate will be equal. As it will be for here. It's not a perfect circle by any means, but it sure is uh, more of a circle than a gentle curve. So we're going to come around here and then we're going to get into some strange shapes here. This one here being a tighter curve. So your uh, rotation rate faster than your feed. And then we've got a sweeping curve. So faster feed, slower rotation. And that goes directly into a tight, two tight curves in a row. And again, so you know the drill. stretch here with a gentle curve, a tight curve, and then a straight away. And we'll stop it right there. 
Guys, if you're having problems rotating your stock, there could be resistance from friction on your table. And for that, you can apply a little bit of paste wax and buff it up or, um, you know, just don't use waxes that have silicone because that, of course, can uh, interfere and get into your stock and cause problems with finishes. So now that we've got that one done, let's move on to pattern three with our um, sharp corners and uh, 90 degrees and more than 90 degree angles. Well, this is where things get a little different and you really have to rely on the power of those fast rotations of the stock in the smaller or with the smaller blades and straight cuts this entire time. But you've got certain areas here that have really, really sharp turns in them. And how do you get that crisp corner? Well, it depends. Is it an inside corner or an outside corner? So I'm going to try to show you how to um, go about cutting these with the differences of inside and outside corners. So for now, I'm just going to start cutting it. And again, you're compensating for your blade drift. And once you get to this sharp corner, you want to kind of stop your feed. And without putting any pressure back this way, you kind of want to put pressure on the back of the blade and turn it sharply. So did you see that? I turned it, but I didn't really cut anything. And then from there, you can travel along this one line until you get to the corner. And now it's the same thing. No pressure back this way. You almost want to pull it as you rotate so that it doesn't cut, just like that. And then you can get in there and cut this line. So I'm gonna to continue to cut these until I get to this one, and then I'm gonna show you something different. So from here, pulling back, quick rotation. And I'm getting off the line there a little bit, so just a quick, correction on my steering and we can carry on with the cut. And we're going to stop it there. Let's say that this, let me get this dust blower out of the way, this is the part that we want to keep. So this is all scrap in this area. So we can carry on past this line, do a little loop and come back around and hit this at the angle to get that nice sharp corner. And I'll show you what I mean by that. We carry on past the line, spin around in a loop. And when you get back to your piece, carry on straight through with the cut. Now that piece will fall away and of course by doing that now I don't know if you can see it on the camera but we have an extremely sharp and crisp edge right there on the part that we want to keep. Who cares about the scrap if this is on the outside of our workpiece it'll never be used anyway but we got that nice clean edge. We're going to do the same thing on this other sharp corner over here Except for this one, we're going to say that we want to keep this side. So we don't want to come out here now. So what do you do? Well, if we're going to keep this, that means that this part in here is scrap. So what we can do is cut up to the corner, stop, pull it back a bit, and in the scrap area, rotate in the scrap area and pull backwards back into that corner. Once you get into the corner, rotate the blade and then start your cut. We've already determined that this area here is going to be scrap. 
So just like I showed you before, you can do that rotation around the outside and then come back in to carry on with your cut. Now in both those instances now, we've got a beautiful sharp clean corner in here. We've got a beautiful sharp clean corner out there and all of our um, damage we'll say that we did in order to get those is all in the waist areas piece here and a little bit there where we spun the blade. So now using the methods that I've shown you, carry on cutting out this particular piece. For these really sharp ones here, you would have to determine on the piece that you're cutting where the waste areas are to decide what method you want to use uh, in order to cut them. But I'll cut through these here and uh, you can see what you think by the final product and then you can practice at your end. Well, there's a reason I stopped there, and that's because we have these kinds of lines here. Um, the cutting I've shown you so far is basically considered as like shape cutting. This would be a shape that you are cutting, but you can see here there really is no shape. The lines are every which way, and those are called veining lines, and their purpose is usually to show detail in a piece. Um, <clears throat> you'll, you'll know what they are when you see a pattern. But for this sort of thing here, um, you would have to, just like we rotate it sharply on the corners, you would have to rotate here to get this veining line along there. And then you could veer off again and then come to the intersecting point and do your sharp rotation and you know work from there. So I'm gonna show you how to do these veining lines for this one here, because we've already got this turnaround that we did back here, we can use that as a place to turn our blade around and back it into the hole until we're in the right position to turn and come along our veining line. So let's cut these. And then back to our intersecting point. Again, pulling backwards so we're not getting any cutting action. And then carry on to cut these veining lines. And we're gonna do the same thing here. A sharp turn to get the one vein right there. Come back to the intersecting point, pulling almost backwards on our blade so that there's no cutting action. We're gonna rotate it and then cut our last veining line. And if that were to end there, you could just simply release the tension on your blade at the bottom and remove your blade. And that's all there is to cutting those straight, sharp corners. In this particular pattern, the fourth line here is a mixture of sharp corners and curves. And all you would need to do is 
apply the same concepts that I've already shown you to cut through this line. You got a little bit of veining down here. You can see this one veining line here, another one right there and there and there. You've got these sharp corners. Now we could, as I've already showed you how to do, depending on which side is waste, we'll say this side here is waste. We can come out, do that loop around and come back in. Same with here. If this is all waste, same with here. Do the loop around and come back in. On this one now, you can't do it if this side is waste. So you'd wanna come in, rotate into the waste area, and then turn to make your um, sharp corner. Making sure that you're paying attention to feed rates and rotation rates all the way along to get those smooth curves on the rest of the piece. Just like I said, keeping in mind which area is waste here, you don't want to do that turnaround. So you cut into the waste area to spin your blade into the corner, rotate and carry on cutting. Same thing here now, we want to rotate, go back into the corner, and then start cutting again to get our pattern. Here, slower feed rate, sharper turn rate will get you around that corner. Now, see how I went off the line there? I did too sharp of a corner. So in troubleshooting that, I know that my feed rate was too slow in comparison to my turning rate or my turning rate was too fast in comparison to my feed rate. You'll get that with time and with practice. I've never met anybody who was able to follow the lines consistently every time. There's always some discrepancy or some deviation from the pattern. Don't let it worry you. As you get better, your, uh, the amount that you deviate from the pattern and the amount that you go off the lines will get less and less and less. By keeping the saw at 50%, like what this one is right now, it really increases your accuracy and it increases your control. 
it also will reduce your vibrations considerably. So keep that in mind. It's not a race, you're not in a hurry. You just want to get a nice clean cut and a nice looking project. That's the ultimate goal of scrolling. Not to do it fast. I don't care too much for fast. And there is practice line number four done. Now the very last one on this particular sheet, number five, is um, a combination of circles, tight curves, straight lines, veining lines, and um, <clears throat> it's not that difficult. You will follow along the line here, come around this circle, stop, back your blade up, no need to spin it, just back it up and then carry on with the cut. Back it up, carry on with the cut, back it up, carry on with the cut, back it up, and so on and so on and so on. And that method will carry through with some of the projects that you're going to encounter in your uh, scrolling career, let's call it. So it's just another practice method to get good at and in order to carry those techniques on to your future projects. So let's cut number five on this particular piece. So starting off with a somewhat straight cut into a nice sweeping curve. Now this here is almost a circle. So if you remember with a circle, your feed rate has to equal your rotation rate to get a nice even circle. And there it is. Then back out so that you're not getting any cutting action and then carry on with the straight cut, remembering to compensate for your blade drift. Once you get to the end of that straight cut, again, back up and then rotate your piece. Don't push into the blade on an angle. Just gently push forward and rotate your piece. There should be next to no side-to-side -side impact or pressure or stress on your blade. It should be strictly front-to-back uh, feed rates and rotations on the axis of the blade which of course makes it difficult because that axis is continually moving. It doesn't sit still depending on what type of piece you're cutting. But again here, that one veining line, we're gonna back up and then just gentle forward pressure and then rotate into your line. No rush. the curve, stop, back up, and then straight through on this straight cut again, steering a little bit to compensate for drift. To the end, back, slight rotation. tighter corner, same with here, right on the tighter corner, back it up, now this one here, I would back it all the way back to here, rotate back, and you see what I just did there, reversed it into that corner, and just like we've been doing, Finish the cut. Smoother curve with the feed rate being faster than the rotation rate. Tighter curve with the rotation being faster than the feed. Up to the end. 
just like that. Rotate in the line, remembering to kind of pull back so that you're not hitting on the cutting edge. And then straight into this straight cut to finish it off. And that is the technique used to do those kinds of cuts and corners. I just want to show you the back of this piece and you'll note how clean the lines are. Um, there's not much uh, of a fuzzy line here on the edges and although it is hardboard and you do get a cleaner line on hardboard, it is also due to the fact that I'm using a reverse tooth blade. Um, you can see how nice and sharp these corners are that we wanted to keep. And you can see how nice and sharp this corner is right here where we've come outside and then back in. Really crisp line and it gives you that extra professionalism um, that really shows in your work. So the next thing I want to show you before I conclude this week's show will be pattern removal um, if you did not put the painter's tape down first. Well, for pattern removal, regardless of the size, regardless of how intricate it is, I have found nothing better than a heat gun to remove um, these patterns. And you just need to heat it up a little bit. And what happens is it softens um, the adhesive. You want to be careful that you don't overheat it because you will burn your stock. I'm just going to put my foot here on this uh, just because of the awkward angle of the camera. And once you get that edge lifted up, you'll see how easily this comes off. It's just a matter of getting it hot enough. And there it comes, just like that. It's a rather quick process, and I have found that no matter how intricate the pattern, no matter how tight the curves, no matter how little of these pieces are left intact after you're done cutting, nine times out of 10, you can get the entire pattern to come off in one piece with no pieces left on your, uh, on your cutting. Just like that we've got it stuck together a little bit but we pretty much came off in one piece and there is our cutting finished now this can be a little tacky with this particular method because you've heated up the adhesive and it's actually still there and I find that a little bit uh, of a uh, lint free rag and some mineral spirits give this a nice wash let it dry completely and then you can sand it and it comes out beautifully with no problems whatsoever. And there you have it. Some simple scroll saw techniques. Um, like I said, guys, this is a skill. It is uh, not something like a table saw where once you learn how to use the saw, you can set the fence and rip a perfectly straight line at the dimension that you specify. Um, it's not like a router table where you can install a bearing guided bit and it will follow your piece exactly to make that nice round over or that nice profile. Um, it is not like a drill press that you line up your bit exactly where you want your hole and you pull a handle and it pops a hole through it exactly where you want it. There are so many variables with scrolling between blade size, blade drift, material thickness, material hardness, the intricacy of the pattern, inside cuts, outside cuts, uh, feed rate, rotation rate, 
There's so many variables, blade tension, oh my goodness, it just goes on and on and on, um, that this is an acquired skill. It is something that you learn over time. So please, if you're taking this video as a tutorial and you want to learn scrolling, that is great. Um, take the time to learn the skills you need to do it properly. And don't set your goals outside of your skill zone. If you cut a piece and you think it looks like crap, I promise you there is a scroller out there somewhere that will look at it and say, oh my gosh, I wish I could be that good. Take that piece that you cut, hang it on your wall, and be proud of the accomplishment that you made in learning how to do that. And then if you're not happy with it, strive to do better the next time. Guys, download some of these um, scrolling practice sheets. As I said, I don't know who made up this one that I found online. I googled images of, I think, uh, like I said, scrolling practice uh, patterns or something like that. And this is what came out of it all. So it worked out just fine for me. Um, do it yourself. I mean, use those patterns to practice your straight cuts, your curve cuts, your tight cornering, your, 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 your tight uh, 90 degree corners inside, outside, etc., etc. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. And if you get those basic skills um, down pat, from setting up your saw to truing your blade at 90, to getting the tension, to keeping your speed correct, and then learning the fundamentals of feed rate versus uh, rotation rate, there's no telling what you can do after that. There is no limit other than your imagination. So guys, I want to thank you for watching again this week. Plant your butts in front of your scroll saws and do some practicing. I swear you're going to love it. And once you get those skills down pat, they never leave you. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'm going to see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.